Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be taking a look at Fourier analysis of a single phase semi-converter. Fourier analysis is used to convert a periodic function in terms of sine and cosine. So we had previously analyzed the operation of a semi-converter with an R load, isn't it? We did not go into the detailed aspect of the source current, but you can understand if you look at the operation of the circuit, the source current waveform will be looking something like this. The instant at this where pi to pi plus alpha it is going to zero is because of the freewheeling action. Again, it repeats in every periodic instant of time. So similar analysis can be done to obtain the waveform of source current, but I'm not going to go in that detail for the source current waveform. But in general, what we have to understand here is we are going to convert the source current waveform, which is in a form of a square wave to sine and cosine terms. And that is why Fourier analysis is going to be used. So we will be looking into the detailed derivation of the Fourier analysis for a single phase semi-converter. And there will be some inferences that will be obtained from the derivation, which is extremely important for solving problems. So let's start off with the analysis. So previously we had seen Fourier analysis for a fully controlled rectifier. So initial equations, I'm not going to go in detailed steps for that. It's already there in the previous videos. So please do refer to it. But in general, Fourier analysis is generally defined as the constant term I naught plus summation of n is equal to 1 to infinity cn sin n omega t plus theta n. So let us call this as equation number 1. Where cn is nothing but square root of an square plus bn square. And theta n is nothing but tan inverse of an by bn. So now what we have to find here, we have to find i out, we have to find cn, that is nothing but in terms of an and bn, we have to find theta n. If we find all of these, we can substitute in equation number one and find the overall final expression. So now let's look at the value of i out. So what is the output average current that we are going to get? So I out can be written as 1 by 2 pi average value that is alpha to pi. So this alpha to pi is because at alpha we are going to trigger the thyristor 1 I out into d omega t minus again we'll be triggering in the next cycle from pi plus alpha to 2 pi I out d omega t. Now simplifying this expression, you will be getting zero. So I out is basically equal to zero. Now let us find the value of an. So an is nothing but the representation in terms of cosine signal. That is the average value one by pi alpha to pi again, the same interval we are going to take I out in terms of cosine that is cos n omega t d omega t minus again alpha pi plus alpha to 2 pi i naught cos n omega t d omega t so we will be getting simplifying this expression you will be getting minus 2 times i out whole divided by n pi sin n alpha for n is equal to 1, 3 and 5 and it is equal to 0 for n is equal to 2, 4 and 6. It is just straightforward substitution. So for only n is equal to odd numbers you will be getting this particular expression. So now let's look at the value of Bn. So Bn can be written as the representation with respect to sine. 
So just like the way we found for a n that is 1 by pi alpha to pi integration i naught sin n omega t d omega t minus l pi plus alpha to 2 pi i naught sin n omega t d omega t brackets closed so simplifying this you will be getting 2 times i out by n pi into 1 plus cos n alpha for n is equal to odd values that is 1 3 and 5 and it will be equal to 0 for even values that is n is equal to 2 4 6 so again this is straightforward substitution where you will be getting these expressions now we have found i naught you have found a n you have found b n it's pretty simple to substitute in cn isn't it so recalling the expression for cn what did we write for cn cn is nothing but square root of a n square plus b n square so that is nothing but if we substitute we are going to find it for only odd terms because the even terms anyways a n and b n is equal to zero so substituting this you will be getting c n to be equal to 2 root 2 i naught by n pi into 1 plus cos n alpha to the power root but one thing to note here 1 plus cos n alpha that is 1 plus cos theta can be written as 2 cos square theta by 2 isn't it so we can write this expression as 2 root 2 times i naught by n pi into 2 cos square n alpha by 2 to the power root simplifying this further you will be getting 4 times i naught by n pi into cos n alpha by 2 so this is the expression for cn so we have found the expression for cn the next expression that we have to find is for theta n isn't it so what is theta n theta n is nothing but tan inverse of a n by b n isn't it so that can be written as tan inverse of minus of all the other terms will be cancelled so i am writing the final terms that is 1 plus cos n alpha again theta n tan inverse of sin n alpha can be written as minus of 2 sin n alpha by 2 cos n alpha by 2 isn't it and 1 plus cos n alpha can be written as 2 cos square alpha n alpha by 2 so theta n tan inverse of so again cos and cos will be cancelled sin by cos will be left over you will be getting tan inverse of minus tan n alpha by 2 that is nothing but minus n alpha by 2 so we have found out the expression for c n and theta n and i naught so now we can substitute all of these equations to find the is of t expression isn't it so let's write the final is of t expression it is given by i naught is anyways equal to zero so summation of this is based on the first equation that i had considered n is equal to 135 to infinity 4 times i naught by n pi cos n alpha by 2 sin of n omega t minus n alpha by 2 so this is the final expression for the source current in terms of sine and cosine terms the quasi square waveform in terms of sine and cosine can be written in this particular format
that is the source current expression now we have certain important parameters let's take a look at them one by one so these are extremely important for solving problems so the first one that we are going to look at is rms value of nth harmonic input current so rms value of nth harmonic input current is given by isn so if you consider the same expression that is for nth harmonic that is 4 times i naught by n pi cos n alpha by 2 divided by root 2 so this term this is the nth term and divided by root 2 you will be getting the final expression to be equal to 2 root 2 i naught whole divided by n pi into cos n alpha by 2 very very important expression now what is the fundamental rms current so all of these are being derived from the main expression if you carefully observe so now we will be looking at the fundamental rms current fundamental rms current is1 is obtained simply by substituting n is equal to 1 in this particular equation so that's nothing but 2 root 2 i naught by pi cos alpha by 2 n again is equal to 1 so cos alpha by 2 i hope this point is clear now let's take a look at the displacement angle before that there is one important expression that is the rms value of total input current rms value of total input current input current that is given as represented as is it is given as i out into square root of pi minus alpha by pi i am not deriving the expression again this can be derived by the rms relationship equations but in general this is the expression that is based on the source current waveform that you observe that is pi minus alpha by pi square root of into i naught so now let's look at the third expression or the third important term that is nothing but displacement angle displacement angle is represented as phi n in general and it is nothing but minus n alpha by 2 why is it minus n alpha by 2 in the source current expression if you had seen that there was a term that was associated in terms of displacement isn't it that is nothing but n alpha by 2 so fundamental definition that is phi n is nothing but minus n alpha by 2 because the source current expression if you recall is of t is equal to summation of n is equal to 1 to infinity 4 i naught by n pi cos n alpha by 2 sine of n omega t minus n alpha by 2 was there so sine of n omega t minus n alpha by 2 minus n alpha by 2 is the displacement that is associated with the term so that's why phi n is nothing but minus n alpha by 2 the fundamental displacement angle is given by fundamental displacement angle is nothing but phi 1 that is minus alpha by 2 so what is the displacement factor then again by definition displacement factor displacement factor that is designated as tf is nothing but cos of the displacement angle so in general 
cos of minus n alpha by 2 cos of minus theta is cos theta so you can write it as cos n alpha by 2 and fundamental displacement factor if in case it's asked is nothing but cos of alpha by 2 generally they'll give you the value of alpha and ask you to find the fundamental displacement factor so you can directly substitute and find the value next we will be taking a look at input power factor input power factor so input power factor by definition it's the ratio of rms value of fundamental component of source current by the source current into cos theta so that is nothing but equal to we know the value of is1 we had found previously we know the value of is that is there and cos theta is nothing but the displacement angle here it can be represented as theta or phi n so you will be getting substituting all these expressions you will be getting 2 root 2 cos square alpha by 2 whole divided by root of pi into pi minus alpha now we will be looking at the next term which is nothing but current distortion factor CDF which is given by IS1 by IS again we know the value of IS1 we know the value of IS substituting you will be getting 2 root 2 cos of alpha by 2 whole divided by root of pi into pi minus alpha Now let's look into the next term that is the total harmonic distortion THD total harmonic distortion by definition can be written as square root of 1 by CDF square minus 1 so we had found what CDF was previously substituting the term you will be getting square root of pi into pi minus alpha whole divided by 8 times cos square alpha by 2 minus 1 now what is the active power input that is available active power input active power input pi is nothing but the average value of output voltage and current that is the average values always remember this point and what is the reactive power input reactive power input is nothing but qi is equal to minus v out i out tan alpha by 2 minus v out i out can be written as pi isn't it so minus pi tan alpha by 2 so these are the important inferences and this is how we do Fourier analysis of a single phase semi-converter so these are useful uh, for solving numericals so please do make a note of all these formulas i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of Fourier analysis for a semi-converter in case you have any questions feel free to reach out to me by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you